All right, let's do another motivating example. This one is from pharmacokinetics or pharmacodynamics, which is the study of how medicines move around in the body or what the body does to medicines, what, medicine, what medicines do to the body. Uh, this time we're gonna do a compartment model with five compartments. Um, so uh, our compartments will be the stomach, the gut, the blood, the lymph, and just the medicine being decayed. The molecules have fallen apart. And we're gonna suppose that at every minute or per minute, 6% um, of whatever is in one compartment moves to the next compartment. So we're saying it's not like the entire pill moves from one place to the other, but some percent of it does. So we're saying from the stomach to the gut, 6% moves uh, per minute. And that means it's adding to the gut, but taking away from the amount that's in the stomach. So uh, we'll start with 100 milligrams of some pretend medicine in the stomach and zero everywhere else. And then let's think about the rate of change for the stomach. 6% of it per minute is gonna move into the gut. So that's gonna be losing 6% of what's there. How much is what's in the gut changing? Well, whatever was in the stomach, 6% of that is getting added to the gut. And then whatever's in the gut, 6% of that is leaving. So it's a minus 6% and going into the blood. And then the same thing, the blood is gaining some from the gut and losing some, and the lymph is gaining some from the blood and losing some, and then the decayed, how much is decayed? Well, whatever was in the lymph is, some of it's decaying, and whatever is already decayed stays decayed, so there's no change there, so we have a zero. Um, so you might notice the formulas have a pattern here, um, but it's kind of a pain to be cutting and pasting, it's like, changing all those cell references. Um, another way to do it, if you've taken linear algebra or a matrix, know about matrix multiplies, is to multiply this row times that column, and then the next one would be this row times the next column, and this row times the next column. So all together we're doing a matrix multiply of this row with this matrix. There's a way to do a whole matrix multiply at once in Excel rather than separately like that, but it's uh, a little bit trickier. Uh, so I'm using this mmult here because it's a nicer, more systematic way to do things. And then let's say if I start with this, and here's my rates of change, how much is in the stomach after two minutes? Well, it would be how much was in the stomach plus the rate of change per minute times the time step size, two minutes. And then the same thing for how much was in the gut times the rate of change for the gut times how many minutes. So once you fill in this formula, you can really just copy it and paste it here. And the same thing happens. And then we just fill down, although I already did that. And you copy, the, highlight that and fill down. And uh, just like a cooking show, we say, okay, we put it in the oven and here it comes out. So here's the graph we get. So take a sec to think about this. Does this make sense? The amount of uh, amount in the stomach is dropping off. Looks like exponentially, maybe. The amount in the gut initially rises and then falls. The amount in the intestine, in the blood, takes a while to rise and then peaks a little bit after the gut and then falls off. And the lymph does the same thing. And then the amount that's decayed takes a while to rise and it never comes back down. Once the medicine's decayed, it's decayed. Um, so uh, those are some interesting curves and they actually have names and I've pre-written them here. So these are called surge curves uh, by some authors or Pearson type three curves. And the formula for like the gut curve is something like T times E to the minus T times a few constants. The formula for the, uh, and notice that it kind of starts out linear from the origin and it has a T here. Uh, the formula for the blood amount curve starts out more like a parabola and that turns out to be basically t squared times e to the minus t. The formula for the lymph starts out more like a cubic. Of course, it's hard to tell parabola from cubic and then falls off kind of exponentially. So that's like t cubed e to the minus t. Um, so you can just change the power on that to get different shapes. Um, here we're pretending that it was 6% from one stage to the other and nothing ever moves backwards. Uh, I'm not really a doctor, but um, I'm guessing something could move from the lymph back to the blood, for example. Uh, so when that happens, we model it more with something called a bi-exponential 
constant times e to the other constant times t plus another term like that. Just two of those is bi-exponential. You can have tri-exponential and so forth. Um, and you can also use these for like water flowing from one lake to another and to another and to another, or pollution in the water flowing from one lake to another to another. Um, so all kinds of interesting uses for this. Uh, so this is these surge curves. We'll be seeing those over and over again. I like to say initially I was really interested. I didn't know much about surge curves, and then I got more and more interested in them, and then my interest kind of fell off for a while. So that's a joke that takes a while to figure out. All right, on to the next example.